Hey everyone, I've been using the new 2022 iPad Air for over a week now, and what's so interesting about this tablet is just how close it is to the iPad Pro while being actually quite a bit cheaper. And for the first time, there are actually more similarities than there are differences with the Air and Pro, making this tablet a stellar option for those who want the Pro experience and main features, but don't want to pay as much. So here's what I did. I've been an iPad Pro user for many, many years now, and basically I just took my iPad Pro and swapped it out with this iPad Air to see how many differences I'd actually notice in my daily usage, and I just used this as my main tablet. And I definitely do have some thoughts to share. Okay, so first up, before we talk about all the things the iPad Air actually offers, let's talk about what you're not getting if you choose the Air over the Pro. The biggest difference here is still the display. Now, I think the display on this tablet is actually quite beautiful and looks good for almost everything I've done with it, but I have noticed the quality is just not as perfect as the iPad Pro, and the brightness is just not as great outdoors. That being said, it's incredibly close, I'm just nitpicking at this point, but there is a very small difference. But the biggest difference is the refresh rate. This iPad has a 60Hz display like the iPad Mini and previous iPad Air, and of course the iPad Pro has that 120Hz ProMotion display. Now, I might be tripping on this one, but I feel like the display here is a hell of a lot smoother than the previous iPad Air, even still being 60Hz. Like, pretty much all the devices I'm using at this point are 120Hz. My laptop, my iPad Pro, my phone, everything is 120Hz, and going to 60Hz, I didn't really mind it here or notice that much either. Like for example, scrolling, drawing with the Apple Pencil, opening and closing applications, using the trackpad, it's really not that obvious that it's 60Hz. In the previous iPad Air, it did feel pretty smooth, but there was kind of a little bit of a choppiness here and there with animations and just doing things on a daily basis. But here, I really don't see that at all. Yo, Noah, I got a question for you. I just woke up, what's up? Is the new iPad Air display actually smoother? Do you feel like it feels smoother than the previous one? What a question. Um, it's, it's just a little bit smoother. I, I don't know. I, I might be wrong, but I, I agree with you there. Okay, that's all I needed to hear. Okay, we'll talk soon. Peace. <laughs> Okay, so it's not just me, and obviously it's still just 60 hertz, but I feel like Apple has done some really good optimizations in the software to make the display feel a lot smoother for daily tasks. There's also differences like the camera setup on the back, which doesn't have the ultra-wide lens or LiDAR scanner for augmented reality use cases. One of my wonderful viewers recently called me out in a comment on a video where I said that tablet cameras are kind of pointless and nobody uses them. This viewer mentioned that they actually use their tablet camera and the large display for accessibility purposes. For someone with low or limited vision, being able to take a photo of an object or a scene or a document and be able to zoom in on such a big display is definitely a key feature for those who need it. So. I'm sorry, I'll talk more about tablet cameras in the future. Basically, if you want to shoot photos or videos with this tablet, I think you're going to be quite happy with the photos coming off of this tablet. It's one of the best. There are some other small things like only two speakers are going to be playing audio versus four speakers on the iPad Pro, and honestly the speakers still sound great, I don't really have any complaints when watching videos or throwing on music when I'm working, no problem with the speaker quality here. The tablet does have USB-C versus Thunderbolt on the iPad Pro, but to be honest, I never really took full advantage of Thunderbolt on my M1 iPad Pro since the day it came out. So I mean, I'm happy with USB-C, and it is actually faster in this tablet than the previous iPad Air. The Air also has a fingerprint scanner power button versus Face ID for security on the Pro, but once again, I do actually like the fingerprint scanner a little bit more than Face ID on the Pro. Sometimes you're kind of in an awkward angle trying to unlock the tablet, or the sunlight's beaming directly down on the Face ID scanner, and there's just all these complications with Face ID that make it kind of difficult to use at times. While the power button on the very top, you can just press it, it immediately works, it's natural, I got no complaints. And the bezels are a little bit thicker on the display, but I really don't mind. And the Pro also comes in 11 inch and 12.9 inch models. Well, this Air is just the one 10.9 inch display model. So if you need a big iPad, you gotta go with one of the Pros. It's just how it is. And also, if you need more storage beyond 64 gigs or 256 gigs, the Pro offers quite a few other storage options. But other than all those small emissions, everything else between this and the Pro are virtually the same. Now, one visual difference that the Air actually has over the Pro is the new set of colors. I got the blue and it looks really good. Not pale and space gray-like, 
it's like really quite blue. This is not doing it justice. It is a very blue tablet. The other colors look stellar as well, especially the new lavender and cream color. I'm quite a big fan of the color lineup with these new iPads. And it also has the exact same design as the iPad Pro. And you already know how I feel about the iPad Pro design. I've said it many times before, it is one of the most beautiful designs in tech to this day. Despite being a 2018 design, it's a joy to use, it's thin, it's light, it's beautiful, minimal, and kind of just feels magical when you actually use it on a daily basis. And because it's the same design, all those Pro accessories are going to work with this iPad as well. That means the Magic Keyboard and Apple Pencil, and other third-party accessories like the ones from Logitech or other companies. The Magic Keyboard is great for typing up essays or replying to emails, just general day-to-day -day typing, and the trackpad is great for doing photo editing, video editing, and any other things that require precision. I really have no complaints with the Magic Keyboard, I use it almost every single day, it's an excellent typing experience, excellent trackpad experience, my only wish is that you could actually fold it flat without removing the iPad from the case itself, but I've survived so far, it's, it's pretty good. And the Apple Pencil. I really don't have any complaints about this pencil besides the fact that I wish it came in the box because it is such an essential accessory for the iPad. It's wonderful for note taking, drawing, just navigating the operating system, and even being the 60Hz display, there's virtually no latency and it's a great drawing or handwriting experience. And with some of the money you're saving buying the Air over the Pro, you can put some of that cash towards these accessories, which I think you probably will want if you're buying this iPad. There's also the front ultra-wide camera, which now has center stage compatibility, so it's great for those video calls and apps that support the tracking feature. It's pretty cool. And this is what video from the front-facing camera actually looks like. It shoots 1080p, and the quality is pretty good, and you're hearing the audio quality as well right now. Let me know what you think. Now, the big headlining feature for the Air this year is that it actually has the M1 processor inside, the same as the iPad Pro. It also has 8GB of RAM, just like the Pro, although the Pro does have the 16GB of RAM option if you buy the higher storage models. For my usage as a creator, and someone actually does push the iPad and use it for creative professional tasks, it really can handle everything. The performance is stellar. I actually worked on the thumbnail for this video in Affinity Photo, which is like Photoshop for the iPad, but actually has features and tools, as well as Lightroom to edit the raw file initially. With many layers, text, and other adjustments, the iPad kept up with everything, even editing a raw image. The Air is super powerful. Drawing in Procreate, no problems either, even with projects that have many layers and a lot of stuff going on, and just using the tablet for multitasking, like typing an email while watching a video, or having two web pages open at the same time, using the tablet as I normally would for all of my day-to-day -day tasks, whether they're simple and casual or professional and a bit more hardcore, it can handle everything. The specs are crazy in this machine. So while I did just mention some of the apps that I use on the iPad for work, you do need to know if the apps that you personally need for work or school or whatever are actually available on this iPad. Despite having the M1 processor and all this power, if the software you need is just not available on iPadOS, you might not really want to consider an iPad and may want to go with a laptop instead iPadOS 15.4 is very good and has a lot of great features like universal control, which works well with your Mac, home screen widgets, quick note, solid multitasking powers, and I'm used to it and I know how to really take advantage of this software and use it to its fullest. But for some people, it just might not be enough for daily work and that person might be you. So take a look at the App Store, see if the apps that you need or alternatives you need are available and that will help you make your decision if you actually do want to buy an iPad. And finally, battery life. It's an iPad, it's pretty great. Standby is impressive, and I do use this tablet for a variety of things, so getting an exact reading on battery life is a little bit tough, but some days it's just watching YouTube or other shows, and it'll last a full day watching content on and off. Other days I'm drawing in Procreate, or writing out shot lists and notes, replying to emails, switching between Wi-Fi or 5G when I'm out and about. But the one consistent thing with battery life is that it almost always lasts a full day of usage. Some days I end the day at around 40% if it's a lighter day. Other days maybe 20% if I'm working hardcore on this iPad all day. Regardless though, a full day of usage with this iPad is definitely possible. Okay, so as I've said throughout this video, this iPad Air is basically a 2021 iPad Pro, which is still an excellent, capable tablet, but cheaper. That's it. Between the Air and the Pro, you're really not missing much at all. You're just saving some cash. It's almost too good to be true. And it kind of is. 
First of all, if the Pro and Air are actually now this similar, it just means that people aren't going to spend that extra cash on the Pro. And what that means is the next iPad Pro is definitely going to be a big upgrade. Whether they announce it in the summer at WWDC or in the fall, it's probably going to have a lot of features, new design, and maybe even newly supported software with a new processor. So with the new iPad Pro coming in just a few months, you might want to consider waiting if you really want to have the latest and greatest with the most amount of power. And maybe you don't want to wait for a new iPad Pro, and that's fine, because the Apple refurbished store and eBay and Kijiji actually have plenty of previous iPad Pro models for cheaper or the same price as this Air. You're going to get that 120 hz display, other Pro-specific features, more storage, and it might be the better option for you. And both of those points, the fact that a new iPad Pro model is coming very soon and refurbished iPad Pro models might be cheaper or the same price, kind of ruin the excitement of this new iPad Air. But that being said, it doesn't matter. Maybe you just need an iPad today. Maybe you want to get a brand new iPad instead of a refurbished or used one. Or you just want a colorful iPad. Or maybe you just don't care that a new Pro model is coming soon and this is all you need for your work and day-to-day -day tasks. In that case, the Air makes a lot of sense. It really has all the features you could want. Power and software updates for years, great accessories, stellar hardware, and you get to save some cash over the pricier current Pro model. As someone who has used the iPad Pro every day since the redesign dropped in 2018, switching over to this iPad Air from my current M1 Pro, I really didn't notice much of anything. In daily usage, they were virtually identical. You get everything the Pro offers pretty much, just at a cheaper price. It's that simple. And that's pretty much it for the iPad Air. Now, I've talked way too much about this tablet. I want to hear your thoughts on this device in the comments down below. Also, tell me your favorite iPad Air color as well. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.